In the previous part of this tutorial, I outlined a simple, general method for making a 2D lighting system. However, one important aspect of lighting I did not really talk about was making shadows in your games. So, in this follow-up video, I'll outline some general techniques to create 2D cast shadows and go into greater detail about the method that I use in my own game. This tutorial has three different segments. First. I'm going to explain the general strategy used to create shadows, regardless of what type of shadows you wish to use. Secondly, I'm going to give an in-depth look at the pinpoint lighting system I use that causes hard shadows like this. Finally, I'm going to wrap up the video with an examination of alternative methods you might want to use. This will be much less in-depth because I don't do this myself, but it'll give you an idea of where to go if you want to take that direction. So let's get down to business. As previously established, our lighting system boils down to us directly rendering the light levels of the scene into our lighting mask. If I want to set the ambient light of the scene, I just fill the lighting mask with the appropriate color. If I want to place a light at an area, I just need to draw it. This is where we ended up in the last video. However, when we want to have cast shadows in our game, the problem is not so simple. We don't want the light to go through the walls in our scene. So, the light shouldn't be able to go here, or here, or here. But instead should be blocked by the pillars. So basically, we don't want to render the light where it isn't supposed to be. See, this is the ambient light level. It should be unchanged by this point light here. The areas in shadow must be unaffected when we render the light, so we should avoid rendering there. This is important. Our goal is not to render shadows over our lights. We want to instead not render where the lights are blocked. Once this is done, then you've created shadow casting. Regardless of what style of shadows you wish to create, you need to follow this general principle. I must note that adding additional lights into the system does not matter also. Each will only light the areas of the scene that it needs to, and the lights will come together in the appropriate manner. Effectively, the processing for each light is self-contained, so you can have as many lights as you want without worrying about how they interact. Let's say we rendered another light here. So, as you can see, they two lights don't interfere with one another, but work together to create the appropriate illumination. So there you have it. That's the overall strategy to create efficient, scalable cast shadows. Next. I'll explain my methods and reasonings for how I apply this in my own lighting system. This diagram illustrates how lights work in the real world. All light sources emit light from a volume of space, which means it is possible to partially block the light, causing dimmer light instead of full shadow. Pinpoint lights, on the other hand, are lights where all of the illumination comes from a single point in space instead of an area. This means that the penumbra and antumbra effectively don't exist, and an area is either in total shadow or full illumination. Now, although pinpoint lights are not completely realistic, they allow for very, very easy shadows. There are a couple of reasons why. 1. Because our shadows are total, all we need to do is completely exclude them from our rendering. We don't have to worry about dim lighting or gradients of shadow. Number two, because our shadows radiate directly outwards from our light source, we don't have to worry about shadows hooking back around the objects. Each one is simply a linear projection. This means both that the processing for each shadow is self-contained, and we can simply render our lights with a triangle fan. So, keeping these things in mind, let's look at the way that my system works. My overall strategy is simple. First, I create the basic geometry for my light, as a simple quad. Next, I check this geometry against a simple shadow map I have in game. This map maintains a list of all objects that block light, represented as line segments. For every light barrier that collides with my light, I perform a polygon clipping pass to remove the block area from my light's geometry. Each additional pass builds the light's geometry until the result fits our scene. Finally, after the appropriate geometry has been created, I render the light in a triangle fan using a texture to get the appropriate light fade off, and the appropriate color to represent the light's hue and intensity. 
So in game, it would look like this. This process is simply repeated for every light in my scene. This is a simple program I wrote to test my lighting system. It lets you see the generated geometry in real time. This is an example of a decently complex shadow map. All of the green lines mean that light is being blocked from that segment. There are a couple of things we should note here. First off, with this setup, we have to maintain a shadow map in our game. This isn't really an issue if we have a static map like this, since we can create the map once and then keep it, set, keep it simple. But if we have dynamic maps, we need to be careful to keep the shadow map updated. As an extension of this, every additional light barrier that we compare our light to eats up more time, so making sure the map is optimized is a very good idea. Secondly, this system is only equipped to deal with line segments that block light. Curves and pixel-perfect pixel lighting are out of the question. So this is a general way that you can do hard shadows. Next, I will briefly discuss other methods of lighting that you may wish to utilize. There are two main alternative styles of lighting that I think should be touched upon. Stylized blurred shadows, which give a game a softer tone, and realistic soft shadows, which involve rendering penumbra and antumbra as discussed earlier. Blurred shadows are best exemplified by the game Starbound, currently being developed by Chucklefish. This is a screenshot from a video they posted showing off their lighting system. You can see some severe differences from the lights I've been rendering. The lighting is allowed to bleed through objects, isn't really sharply defined, and generally creates an entirely different mood from the hard shadows I've been showing. I have to admit, I'm not 100% clear on how they did this. However, I can think of a way to adapt my pinpoint lights that will result in something close. Basically, you should first render your lights into a much lower resolution lighting mask using the hard shadows described earlier. You'll end up with something like this. This is our smaller lighting mask in comparison with the full resolution scene. Then, when we render the lighting mask over our scene to produce the final lighting, we would stretch it up and apply heavy additive Gaussian blur to create our final look. The final result looks tolerably close to what they did, and will still end up being very fast. There may be some issues I'm not realizing, since I haven't taken the time to implement this myself, but that should be a decent start to implementing blurred shadows in a game. I briefly talked about realistic soft shadows and how they differed from pinpoint lights. When in-game, they tend to look very, very good. Here's an example implementation someone did based on a GameDev.net article. But the major problem with these lights is that they take more time to render because there are more complications in computing them. This leads to less efficient algorithms. I've done some thinking on how to implement them, and though I really haven't had any concrete specific ideas on how to implement them in a fast and efficient manner, it should be possible to bastardize my polygon clipping algorithm to handle realistic lights. A good deal of the work can be done by simply cropping out the entire region of umbra, penumbra, and antumbra, leaving a fully lit area, and allowing you to deal with the penumbra and antumbra separately. This drastically reduces the scope of the problem and can be used as a jumping off point to make things easier. Admittedly, this isn't much, but it's a start to getting realistic shadows in your game. I hope this tutorial was illuminating. Before I finish, there are a couple of points I need to mention. First off, people have asked me for source code. I fully understand that people want to have a copy of my code so that they can test this quickly and easily, and make modifications if they want. However, there are a few reasons why I'm keeping this closed source. First off, my algorithm is not 100% bug-free. It performs well enough for me to work on other things, but it produces unnecessary vertices and slight artifacts in certain situations. I don't plan on releasing unfinished code. The concepts behind the lighting engine are solid, and I'm perfectly willing to explain them, but the code is not final. Secondly, and this brings me to my other point, I plan on integrating my lighting engine into the Java Rabbit Engine 2.0. It will be an open source plugin with a documented, polished API. That is when I plan on releasing my code, as part of my updated engine that allows developers to easily integrate lighting into their games. 
I am also hoping on providing multiple different styles of lighting, so developers can switch between soft shadows, hard shadows, and blurred shadows at will, all backed by a common API. That said, while I have a significant amount of work done on JRabbit 2.0, it's far from finished, and it will probably be a while until anything is released. Anyway, thank you for watching, and once again, stay tuned!